The following is a recording of a live questions and answers session with Chris McCann that took place on Monday, November 4th, 2013. Hello and welcome in to eBible Fellowship Questions and Answers Time, where you can interact with us with your questions and comments related to the Bible, and we'll try to respond as well as possible by going to the Bible. And so, with our Bibles at the ready, it's now time to turn things over to our speaker, Chris McCann. Good evening, Chris. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to eBible Fellowship's Monday Night Question and Answer program tonight. We're going to take a look at the Bible with your questions and comments. And each person is invited to share whatever is on your mind by contacting us. And one of the ways that were mentioned at the start of the program, and we'll be happy to take your call. Well, we have only a short time together, so we're going to open up the room right now to the first person on the phones. Welcome to our question and answer program. Please go ahead with your call. Good evening, Chris. How are you tonight? Good evening. I'm doing well. Thank you. That's good. Um, I have a few verses, especially uh, after your lesson of yesterday on uh, 2 Thessalonians. Um, I have a verse on uh, uh, Ephesians 4.18. They're very short verses. Ephesians Uh, 4.18. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. And uh, our second Peter 2.12, please. Okay. Second Peter 2.12, but these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed speak evil of the things that they understand not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. Yeah, and one last one, if you don't mind, is in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 19 and 21. Ecclesiastes 3, verse 19. um, For that which befalleth the sons of men befalleth beasts. Even one thing befalleth them. As the one dieth, so dieth the other. Yea, they have all one breath, so that a man has no preeminence above a beast, for all is vanity. And verse 21. Oh, okay. Who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth upward, and the spirit of the beast that goeth downward to the earth? Yeah. Following your study on the Second Thessalonians uh, chapter two of yesterday, uh, you refer them to Second Peter three five yesterday. Um, so then I, I was reading that when men and I came up with this: um, when men willfully ignore the knowledge of God uh, by mocking, deriding, blaspheming God, uh, their understanding is then one of ignorance, uh, one of arrogance. And therefore, I think uh, reading further in Ephesians uh, chapter 4, verse 18, can this uh, darkened understanding, as we read in Ephesians, be compared with the instinctive and irrational understanding of beasts, which we found in Second Peter 2.12 and also in Jude verse 10? And ultimately, if man, in their understanding, um, uh, also is compared to beast, then as beast, they go down to the earth. That means they're destroyed because beasts at the end will be destroyed and their spirit will not go um, in front of God, as uh, you just read in Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Well, uh, the Bible does uh, typify... Uh, unsaved men as beasts, as as you read in Second Peter two, in verse twelve, and I think that that's part of, um, like for instance, where where God refers to um, beasts from time to times uh, in the book of Jeremiah or uh, in Revelation six verse eight, um, where he's talking about um, the pale horse. And his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death 
and with the beasts of the earth. And and so there is a spiritual um, component to it that that beasts do typify unsaved individuals and um, especially in in the case of those that do not understand the things of the gospel they they do not understand time and judgment for instance as it says there uh, they speak evil of the things that they understand not and god tells us in daniel 12:10 that none of the wicked will understand and that's in the context of the opening up of the scriptures at the time of the end the wise will understand but none of the wicked will understand and now we're uh learning a little bit more about ecclesiastes 8 5 and 6 where it says the wise man's heart understandeth both time and judgment and we had thought well uh you know as long as people understood May 21 of 2011 that that was Judgment Day, well, they they had the understanding that God was talking about. But there's another element to that, which is an understanding of the judgment of God. And, and that's important because um, the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 8, in verse 7, Yea, the stork in the heaven knoweth her appointed times, and the turtle and the crane and the swallow observe the time of their coming. But my people know not the judgment of Jehovah. So the lack of understanding the judgment of the Lord, and with some people they don't understand time or judgment, some people may have some inkling uh, concerning the time. And, and yet they lack uh, discernment about the judgment. Individuals in the churches, when they heard the judgment of God was upon them, well, they denied it, they dismissed it, they reviled anyone who who declared it, and and so they showed themselves like brute beasts, and and so they they did not know time nor judgment. Other individuals may have come out of the churches in some recognition of the time. Maybe even they proclaimed May 21 would be the day of judgment in advance of that day. But then when we entered into this period of judgment day, um, well, none of us knew in advance the judgment, but uh, it's God's good pleasure to reveal things sometimes after the fact, after his people go through it, uh, for instance, the disciples were told in advance what would happen when Christ went to the cross, and, and then there was just confusion, and they were shocked that he had died, and, and there was a period of some time as, as the Lord appeared to them to encourage them that it wasn't uh, the worst thing ever, but it was actually the greatest victory you could imagine that he had gone to the cross. And and so sometimes the Lord's people do not have all the necessary information or they don't comprehend it in advance of something. But afterwards, God, uh, he, he um, fills them in. He opens up their understanding. And now God's people are understanding judgment we we understood time but it also requires an understanding of judgment the nature of judgment day and this is where some are failing because it was not as they had thought and it was not in the way they were told it would happen and so now uh, they they have no ears to hear it Many are shutting their ears. They don't want to even look into it to see the biblical possibility of of what could have taken place. They they just um, are going with what their eyes have seen. They're trusting that their eyes uh, would not lie to them, and that's a very foolish thing to trust, to believe what your eyes can see or not see. That's extremely foolish when it comes to spiritual things. 
And and so they conclude there is no judgment day. And and they are failing now um to qualify as a wise man because a wise man's heart discerneth both time and judgment. And that's what God is revealing to his people at this time. But thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you for those verses. And if anyone else has a question uh, or a comment, you're welcome to give us a call or or you can enter your question or comment into Pal Talk and it'll be relayed to us in the room. Well, let's go to the next person on the phone. Welcome to our question and answer program tonight. Please go ahead with your call. Uh, yes, good evening, Chris. How are you today? I'm doing well, thank you. Thank you for the study tonight and uh, for yesterday also. I uh, really brought to mind a, a lot of good information. But um, I noticed one thing that, uh, not in your study, but in, in, in um, I don't know, something I read where some people are suggesting that the, the Revelation 9 verses that, um, I'm sorry, the Revelation 11 verses have to do with the beginning of the Great Tribulation occurring on May 21st of 2011 and instead of 1988. And I would just like to know where is the flaw um, or where are they going wrong with that sort of reasoning where the two witnesses well, are standing up? Yeah, on? yeah that, that's a good question because that has been around, floating around... Um, pretty much since May 21, 2011. And it's based upon the idea of how the believers appeared to the world uh, on that day and in the days after it, where we had become a mockery. And so when people read Revelation 11, for instance, where it says um, in verse 7, and when they shall finish their testimony... The beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another, because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them, which saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven, saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. So the the teaching is, well, um, the two witnesses finished their testimony on May 21. That's when we we stopped making this declaration to the world. And then we were killed. Our, our witness is dead. And, um, and look, uh, the, the world was rejoicing. Remember, they had May 21 parties. They, they were celebrating that nothing happened. And it, it fits very well with the newspaper, but the problem is we are never to try and understand the Bible through the newspaper. We're never to try and understand the Bible by how events seem to have unfolded to us in the world. And and that's exactly what people are doing. They're not looking to the Bible to define these terms. They're looking at their experience and the experience of others as it played out it, it right before their eyes and and they um they saw the parties and 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 people rejoicing on that day and they think that's the fulfillment of these words and it's no different than people who see an evil ruler or dictator like Hitler and they see all the damage he does and and they since it's happening right before their eyes, they say, well, there he is, there's the man of sin. And it, it's exactly the same sort of um, uh, of uh, way of coming 
to to a conclusion and or a hermeneutic and it's not a hermeneutic the bible allows and it's only when we just go verse by verse and we stay within the bible we have no problem with these passages the two witnesses are the the believers or the witness of the word of god within the congregations and there comes a time when that witness is finished within the churches and and that's what revelation 11 and 7 11 verse 7 is referring to and that's when notice it says in verse 7 the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them that is the point the end of the church age is when satan was loosed that is when he he overcame the witness of uh, the gospel within the churches because God permitted him to. He took his seat as the man of sin. That word ascended out of the bottomless pit is extremely important. It, it, it indicates the, the beginning of the Great Tribulation, the beginning of the end of the church age, the beginning of the judgment on the churches, Satan did not ascend out of the bottomless pit on May 21. He had already been loosed, and and uh, it's just a a, a very uh, obvious error that people are making when they're saying, "Well, the beast ascended out of the bottomless pit on that day." No, there, it's not possible. And besides that, it says of the beast that he shall overcome them and kill them. The word overcome is a word that means victory. It, it means to prevail. It's the word that's used of the Lord Jesus um, elsewhere that indicates that that someone has won. And, and so basically people are saying that Satan won. Satan won on May 21, 2011. And, and that does not fit the Bible. The Bible says that God completed his salvation plan. He saved everyone that he intended to save. He completed the ransacking of the kingdom of darkness, and he delivered all of the elect. Satan no more won on May 21 than Pharaoh won on the day all of the Israelites left Egypt. Satan no more won on May 21 then the king of Babylon won the night when the Medes and Persians took his kingdom and put him to death. Or Satan did not win on May 21 uh, in the same way that Haman did not win on the 17th day of the second month when he was hanged and Mordecai took all that belonged to the house of Haman. It, it, it is just a big error. It's a big mistake. It throws the whole um, discussion that God is, is giving us in Revelation 11 off course. It leads people to uh, arrive at wrong conclusions, and it just causes confusion. Well, it's very dangerous to have this floating out there because I noticed that the other flaw is that they're avoiding the timeline altogether. They're not staying with that timeline. And I think that that's also kind of uh, a grievous error to be doing at this time. Don't you agree? Well, to yeah, but timeline? but we we can't do anything about what somebody's teaching. All we can do is try and and be faithful um, where we have responsibility. Uh, for instance, uh, in our Bible studies or in a program like this or or you know, and uh, on our website, we you won't find that kind of teaching on eBible site. Um, but you know, uh, of course, there's there's people who are going to put forth wrong conclusions and teachings, and and they can they're free to do that. There's millions of them, and and that's out of our control. Yes, well, I I, th I agree with your answer, and thank you very much. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you for those it. verses you. and your question. And let's go to the next person on the phone. Welcome to our Monday night question and answer program. Please go ahead with your call. Hi, Chris. Uh, yeah, I 
wanted to talk about something else, but since you brought up that subject of Revelation 11, I agree with everything you said that uh, Revelation 11 is definitely the end of the church age and not 2011. But also, what's interesting is in Revelation 6, God talks about what happens on in, in 2011, and he talks about how the, the fellow servants and brethren uh, were killed as they. When he says that, he's referring back to uh, the two witnesses, how they were killed. And also, he's leaving himself, when he says killed as they, he, God's leaving himself a lot of, uh, of, of literary latitude as to what he means by that. So, so we need to understand that the killed as they means that there was an end to the testimony that the wit- that the witnesses or the or in the case of the Revelation six the brethren and um, and fellow servants the end of their testimony came on in May twenty one two thousand eleven. But that's covered by Revelation six, not Revelation eleven. I think yeah, that's that, a that that's a, another another uh, outworking of that idea that Revelation eleven is talking about believers today, and we were killed. And and yeah, uh, as we totally talk separate. about as we we talk about um, distributing tracts or sharing information, we're learning it, it goes completely against that idea that that God's people were killed. If, if, no, no, if, the, 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 no, because the message to the, the message to the world is what. In, in other words, it's the end of salvation. That's what that's all it is. It's just the, the message to well, the world, it, not, the, not that the message to the true believers that never ends. It's just a question of yeah, they, the fact they, that, that the true believers are trying to bring the message to the world, and now it's they, over. The verses that you're you're referring to in, uh, and I'll read it in Revelation six verse eleven. It says, "And white robes were given unto every one of them." And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants. And this is referring to the souls um, that were under the altar, that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony. They, the first part of the verse. They should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that right. should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. And right. we have to keep in mind that the souls that are under the altar, they they were killed church over age. the course of the whole church age as uh, right. they were killed physically. Some were killed spiritually. And, and when it says your fellow servants, it's referring to the believers alive during the little season of the Great Tribulation. And right. the true believers were killed as we were driven out of the churches. And and that had nothing to do with May 21. It, it's it's um, a spiritual killing of the people of God. Oh, and but it was and also then, women. It was also that the true believe that the believers during the during the latter reign, the message was no longer being broadcast in the churches. The message of salvation was being broadcast to the world. So we were giving our message to the world. We knew that the churches were were dead by then. And so, so it was very important because now the focus is that the whole world is being warned. But now at the end of that period of the latter rain, now our witness is over. And just as we were killed, just as we were thrown out of the churches, the world has has, has excluded us as well. They don't want to hear the word. So, so well, our well, message well, to hold the world it, hold is it, hold done. It, hold it, hold it, yeah. hold it. That, that's not necessarily true. Uh, ha, have you tried handing out tracts? Have you tried handing yeah. out tracts? I tried talking to people, and it's well. Yeah. Well, uh, you can hand out tracts to to individuals, and and you can hand out a hundred tracts, and and they take but them. But it's not. But it's and it doesn't mean it's not the same. Yeah, why isn't the same. it the same? Like, because we're not we're not trying to warn the world anymore. We're looking for true believers. But, we're looking but, for people but who. But the idea you know, that's being put forth is that no one wants to hear the message of of. The true believers. No, no, no. Because we're no, dead. No, no. Only the, but that's the idea no, that's being the put message. forth. No. Well, well, all right. Well, all, right. Uh, all right. All right. We don't but have. Let me much go back to the one thing I wanted to talk to you about. I just wanted to mention because your subject came up. But, but I was studying First Thessalonians four fifteen through eighteen, and I was one, and I was looking at where it says the dead in Christ shall rise first, and when I studied that subject. And I and you and I posted it so you can look at it in detail. What I found out is that when he talks about the dead in Christ, he's speaking about the true believers before salvation is applied to them, because that's the old man. 
And we and then we put on no, the new No, no, excuse me, excuse me. No, that's not what's being said there. This is referring to the resurrection of the dead. And and then um, following, it'll be the resurrection of the living saints of God that are still on the earth. It, it's not referring to um, something spiritual. Let, let's read this in 1 Thessalonians 4, where it says 15. In, in verse 14, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Now, the, when you look up the word sleep, it has to do with death. These are individuals that have died physically, and when Christ comes, they come with him. And then verse 15, For this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent or precede them which are asleep. And this is a word that, uh, remember, Jesus said of Lazarus, he sleepeth, and he meant he died physically. And it's a word that means death. We're, we're not going also, to it's also perceive used, them. It's also used, that word sleep is also used to those who are not watching. But it's not so used that way here. It, it's very uh, clearly laying out God's program of the end of the world, where he is going to bring about the resurrection of the dead. The the souls that we just um, mentioned in Revelation 6, they don't have bodies because they're in the ground. And on the last day, it's the day of the resurrection and the day of the rapture. They're, they happen simultaneously, and this passage describes that. But thank you. Thank you for bringing up these verses. And I would like to thank everyone for sharing your questions or your comments tonight as we had an opportunity to go to the Bible and to read these things and and to consider what God has said to us. Well, uh, please join us again this coming Friday night at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time, if you can. And uh, until then, have a good night. And may the Lord's perfect will be done. And thanks for joining us again for eBible Fellowship's Questions and Answers Time with your speaker, Chris McCann. You can join us for these Questions and Answers sessions Sunday afternoon following Sunday studies and Monday and Friday evenings following the Monday and Friday evening studies. Until next time, may the Lord's perfect will be done.